Hey everyone, it's Grubby here and I've got another one-stop guide for you here. This time it will be the most elusive of heroes, namely Zeratul. Today I'd like to discuss Zeratul's key strengths, his design philosophy and show you two serious builds with him and one more of a fun build. I want to go through his uh, strengths, how to use his abilities, where to position yourself, who to seek out and damage, how to preserve yourself, how to correctly use Zeratul and show you these uh, these builds. Finally, I would like to play a Hero League game, choosing one of the builds and uh, showing how to play him based on what your opponent's heroes are and what your allies are. All right, let's take a look. I want to discuss with you Zeratul's key strengths here. Zeratul's strengths, I mean, let's talk about his design philosophy first. Zeratul is one of two permanently cloaked heroes in the game. To reveal a cloaked hero, you need to hit him with an area of effect damage because they are essentially untargetable while they're invisible. Cloaked heroes and invisible heroes in Heroes of the Storm are not truly invisible like maybe in some other games or other MOBAs. You do see a blur. Uh, you can see where they are, but as I said, you can't target them until they take damage, deal damage, cast spells, uh, or try to mount up or try to hearthstone uh, which is to portal back to the city all right so there are a lot of heroes who can review you with their skill shots with their area of effect damages but there's also a lot of abilities that can't target you while you're invisible so don't think of your cloak of invisibility as something that makes you unkillable or invincible especially as people get more experience they'll be more and more experienced to also try and review you and kill you and Zeratul, he's a squishy hero. Now, the second great thing about him is that he has a level of mobility that, for example, his kindred spirit, Nova, doesn't have. He's got Blink. Now, Blink can get you out of many a sticky situation, but if you Blink in first to try and assassinate someone, you won't be able to Blink out anymore. So this should be remembered. Furthermore, Zeratul has what I believe is the best heroic ability in the game, Void Prison. Void Prison's applications are truly unlimited. You can use it to section off enemy heroes that you don't want to be part of the fight for a, a small amount of time. You can use it as a panic button, run away and trap all of the opponent's heroes in a Void Prison. You can use it to trap the entire enemy team if they are clustered and your allies can come in and do some kind of wombo combo. For instance, you Void Prison the opponents, Uther runs in, he hammer parties on everyone, ETC starts dancing, Vala throws her Reign of Vengeance in, or Gaslo throws his uh, Gravo bomb and tries to trap everyone. So there's a lot of uh, potential there in the usage of Void Prison, and hopefully we'll see some good ones later when I try Zeratul in Hero League. Um, Zeratul has a really high single target damage, and he's also got decent wave clear and area of effect damage. So when I say he pretty much has it all, that's pretty accurate, I think. The only thing he doesn't uh, have is to the ability to take a lot of burst or sustained damage over time. So Zeratul doesn't quite play like other heroes. You want to kind of dart in and out of combat, do your dirty work, do your spells, your basic abilities, your heroic, and then get out again. Finally, Zeratul allows your team to play more daringly because you're scouting and getting information and it forces the enemy to play more scared, more conservatively because they don't know, maybe you've already seen them, they haven't seen you yet and they think at any time you could tilt the odds of a small skirmish into your team's favor. Alright, let me start by showing one of the two serious builds that I have for him. There we go. Hit and run Zeratul. I like to take this build when I have deduced that the opponents have a team that, although it is of course threatening to me, it may not necessarily be able to lock me down, stun me many times, burst damage me and kill me off, even if I reveal myself for one second. Greater Cleave allows me to hit more people with my Q, with the, uh, with the Cleave, a larger area. It doesn't do more damage on a single target, but you will hit more people with it. If normally you would hit one person and now you will hit two because of Greater Cleave, the buff could have been set to do double damage. Yeah, so your Cleave does double damage. That would be a great 
talent increase. And in this case, it will be true just because you hit two people instead of one. That damage is spread and killing off one person usually is worth more than damaging two separate people uh, for, for, for half of that. But this is a great ability to take advantage of team fights where people generally tend to cluster, for example, because they are focusing down one of your teammates. Now, level four, gathering power, got nerfed in the patch. It's only five to 15% of extra ability power down from eight to 20%, but it's still really, really good. First aid is, um, it was here between first aid and the void slash. Void slash is an ability that has your cleave do 33% more damage if you use it directly coming out of cloak. Now Nova has an ability which is uh, ambush snipe and it does more damage if you use your snipe within one second of leaving cloak. And I kind of find a difference there because the way that I use Zeratul, I would use my singularity spike to hit someone. They are damaged and slowed. My cooldown of singularity spike starts uh, running, which means I can use it sooner again. Then I close the distance, I cleave, maybe do a basic attack, blink out and do it again. Now imagine if you want to use Void Slash, which is more damage as you come out of cloak, you would need to either blink on someone or walk up to them, cleave them, then Singularity Spike them, and then disengage and do it again. But because the cooldown for cleave is so short, you could do it pretty much again by the time you leave, whereas your Singularity Spike wouldn't start running until two, three seconds into the skirmish. So I don't like that order per se. That's why I'm not choosing for Void Slash here. Even though I'm going for a build that maximizes damage in a short amount of time and then pull out again. As such, I still see the most value in first aid here. Void Prison, level 10. Enough said, I think. Level 13, Wormhole. We're, ma we're building a hit and run zero tool here and Wormhole is indispensable. The way to use Wormhole is to dismount before you use it. You stand somewhere where you won't be easy to find. You blink towards the enemy, you take two steps, you're still cloaked, remember, you're cloaked after blink, you take two steps towards them, you singularity spike them, cleave them, maybe basic attack them once, depending on the threat that is mounted against you, and then you press E again to wormhole back to where you came from. Thus, you bridge a maximum distance with your wormhole. You have blinked somewhere, you take a few steps, and you go all the way back to the starting point. This is a bigger point of blink distance than you could have done had you walked up to someone, attacked them, and then blink away. Uh, because there's a maximum amount of blink distance. You have increased that with Wormhole. Why do I say ma uh, dismount before you do it? Because there's a four second cooldown on dismounting and mounting up again. So if you are mounted, you blink towards someone, you take two steps, you attack them, you Wormhole back, there's a one to two second cooldown on being able to mount up again. Now these enemies that you attack, they're very, very angry. They're trying to find you. They're going they're gonna go through the bushes and try to see where are you and try to kill you before um, you know before you get away. So it's ideal if you can mount up right away when you warm all back. Double bombs, this is gonna be part of any build. It's just too good. Double singularity spike. Um, there is uh, some other nice abilities like stone skin and something else, but this one is the best, like berserk. This one is by far the best. Double spike, uh, too good to give up. Level 20, you had some cool abilities. Void Prison doesn't affect allies. Okay, uh, There are some actual applications there, but since I'm mostly a solo and dual queue player, I don't see that I'm going to coordinate something that uh, has a positive effect. Sometimes it's negative. Sometimes you want to lock in your allies in the Void Prison as well, because it offers more potential. So going to go with Rewind here. Four Singularity Spikes, Double Blink, Double Cleave, and just need to make sure that you don't anti-synergize with your Wormhole, because uh, Rewind, you can't do another Blink until you made use of your Wormhole, or until Wormhole expired. So you cannot do Blink, Rewind, Blink, all in one second. You need to wait three seconds between that. So keep that in mind while you're trying to make your escape. All right, let's look at the next build. Um, here we are. The Hunted Zeratul. You've analyzed that the opponents have a team that has extremely high burst damage and basic attack damage. 
and you want to be even more cautious with the way you play. You're not confident that you can get in there, use your cleave and actually live to tell the tale. Now, Zeratul is most scary when he never dies. If you could choose between extremely high damage and die sometimes or high damage and never die, I would always pick the second one because the stress that he causes the enemy is worth a lot. Block is really great, as I said in my previous guide, in the Muradin guide. It's great against Nova, Thrall, and Sergeant Hammer. It's also good against other heroes, but it's best against these three. So keep that in mind when you're trying to make the decision between Regeneration Master and Block. Regeneration Master, I'm a huge fan of it, and Blizzard patched it in the recent patch that it has an immediate effect of virtually having three globes already on level one when you pick it. So a lot of regeneration is great for Zeratul because you're often walking around cloaked between different lanes trying to achieve ganks and, and team kills, like well, kills with your team. So uh, getting globes and buffing your regeneration is really awesome. I, I love this talent on Zeratul. The only thing that has to be said is that if you're going to get bursted down in a space of two, three, four seconds in a fight, Regeneration Master will have done virtually nothing for you. Maybe you gain 120 life during that. And Block would have blocked maybe 500 damage, 400 damage from two basic attacks. So keep that in mind when you're trying to make that decision. Why are we going for Sustain Anomaly here? Well, we already have less talent synergy with the Greater Cleave. We don't, didn't pick Greater Cleave. So we're not as focused on getting Cleaves in, which means that the, um, the Gathering Power would have would mostly be revolved around better singularity spikes not as much on the cleave because we're playing a little bit more scared a little bit more survivable we didn't upgrade our cleave sustain anomaly let's look at it you don't have the 5 to 15 percent bonus ability power that gathering power offers but instead it's splash damages you can hit multiple people if you hit even one extra person with your singularity spike that's double damage of your spike instead of plus 5 or 15 percent so your sustained anomaly buffs your singularity spike way more than gathering power could do of course less single target damage but keep in mind we're trying to stay a little bit more out of the fight with this build so doing a void prison and then at the end of your void prison double singularity spike inside the middle of the void prison you could get 300 or 400 damage on all of them rather or or, or four or five hundred damage on all of them rather than 500 or 550 on one of them so really like that talent there and I encourage you to try it. First aid, void prison, wormhole, double bombs and rewind stays the same. It's ma ma mainly the first two talents that changes. Finally, there's a fun build here, Rambo Zero Tool. I wouldn't recommend this as a serious build, but you can see that the Blizzard divine, uh, design philosophy has imagined Zero Tool also maybe to be a basic attacker. His second ultimate uh, heroic ability, Shadow Assault, indicates that. And all the talents of basic attacking like Season Marksman, Vampiric, Giant Killer, Assassin's Blade, Nervous in Fury, Searing Attack. So try this build if you want. just want to have some fun sometimes and uh, let me know how it goes. I'll be curious because I sure as hell I'm not going to try it. But this is just a fun build. So let's see. There are a few good talents that I haven't discussed yet. Level 1 has Rapid Displacement, which means you can blink more often. It's good. Um, I think it's a good talent. I just choose not to use it because I like the others better. Level 20 also has Nexus Blades. And that is a really good talent too. Slow enemies, you can keep up better. It has a bit of overlap or let's say extra effect together with uh, the Singularity Spike, which also slows enemies. But this one obviously is on every basic attack and it does more damage. I think it's really, really cool. But to me, it pales in comparison to Rewind, which is more spikes, more blinks, and more cleaves. All right, let's go for a game now. And based on what the opponents have, I'll see which of the two series builds I will try. And then we'll, I'll do a constant stream of consciousness uh, commentary during the game. All right, we found a game. Where will we end up this time? I serve. We're 
we've got our zero tool pick and now we're going to analyze the situation see what my team picks see what the opponent's team pick and see how i can best help the team looks like my ally is about to take stitches the opponent has lost vikings which is an interesting character recently got added to heroes of the storm for people that play dota there is a similar character called meepo i haven't played dota myself nor played meepo but i understand it was a character that you could split up if one of the characters died in dota i believe the whole hero the whole unit died whereas it's different in heroes of the storm each of the three lost vikings can die separately and will have a shorter death cooldown than regular heroes it will also give a percentage of experience i'm actually not sure if it's one third or one fourth i believe it may be one fourth from order comes justice now i'm trying to see how i'll build my zero tool will i go for the highest single target damage or go for more of a splash damage build slash survivability to the horde so we've got another melee assassin, though Zeratul should not necessarily be counted as a melee assassin. I know he technically is, but he should not be a frontliner in the way that Thrall is. Uther as a healer is nice. Need to make sure there's no anti-synergy with our Void Prison and Hammer Party. Vala, nice solid sustained damage from afar. Now the opponents, they've got Tassadar who can reveal me. Uh, Moonfire can reveal me, Thunderclap, Stormbolt, Psy Storm, Boomerang Hammer from Falstad, and Spin to Win from Vikings. Each of the opponent's heroes has something that can reveal and damage me and force me to come out of cloak. Looking at what heroes the opponents have, I would say that Falstad is the primary target. When you are Zero Tool, your profile is that of kind of like a scavenger. Maybe like a hyena, if I if I liken it to the animal kingdom. A hyena will occasionally make kills by itself or in groups. Actual kills of uh, creatures that are healthy and adult and so on. But if it is at all possible, it would rather hunt a youngling or someone who's ill, hurt. Or maybe sometimes you go for carrion, what's already dead. So as Zeratul, I would like to focus down people that have already got low life of course i use my void prison as a full combat utility but what i don't want to do is go for high hp targets like muradin and tassadar has shield he's got e never should i expect that i can just take down tassadar from 100 to zero even from 50 to zero if i want to kill tassadar i would need to stay revealed for quite a while and you need to judge the situation to see if that's possible. Let the battle begin. Can I go get this vision here? Uh, Uther's already getting it. Then I'll go to the top. Falstad was there. Now, I don't see... Like, most of the damage on me isn't basic attack damage. So I'm not going to go for block. Falstad has pretty good basic attack damage. But most of the others don't. It's mostly spells that's going to kill me, if anything. So I'm thinking of Regeneration Master here. Or possibly um, Greater Cleave. And I think with the Lost Vikings on the map, I'm going to go for Cleave here. Since um, they're going to have a lot of bodies on the field, instead of like five heroes at the max, they have seven because of the Lost Vikings. So having more splash damage on my Cleave is definitely an advantage. <laughs> you lost it to minions. Let's try to get this mirror in. That's still nice damage. It doesn't always have to be a follow up and a kill to be satisfied with the situation. Want this regen globe before I leave. Heal some HP and mana. Pretend to go down. May or may not. With the wave push towards the enemy gate, it is unlikely that they'll venture forth far and for me to be able to actually take them down. There's, there's something interesting about the 
progress of the lane. If you kill a lot of minions, you'll get closer to the enemy gate and it'll be safer for them. So sometimes if you are the upper dog somewhere, you want to not push the lane too much. So I'm gonna go for the gathering power here. Well done, Uther. I'm gonna go for gathering power because I'm uh, investing in uh, full damage spells gonna make my cleave better as well I got a shield on it from Tassadar the tribute is spawning I just want to see if either of these are gonna stay here leaving here entirely would give the opponent a good experience advantage and it kind of troubles me because they're Vikings. That's kind of what makes Viking good. So I'm gonna stay here for now and clear one more wave. Time will tell whether it's correct or not. It seems like it is because we already have the tribute. So what's going on here in the middle? Someone needs to defend the bottom. He doesn't want to heal me yet because he doesn't want to unhorse. It would cost him time. That's why I did the courtesy of walking alongside of him. If he unhorsed, he would arrive bottom later. You can effectively dodge the full effect of a singularity spike by going into E, like Tassadar just did, going into phase shift. Because it explodes while he's invincible and invisible. Choose a tower. I'm gonna go for first aid here. No one collecting yet. Stitches will. So I'll go. Let's see. Uther's still fine. We've got this tribute. Excellent zoning out by Vala there. Now I know he sees me. I can tell by the movement. He's got Static Charge, which is um, extra damage on targets which recently got Psionic Stormed. You can tell by the fact that he does critical, critical, critical on you. Just damage. Uh, Thrall's coming back, he went for a heal. Just seeing if there's any opportunity to do some damage. Okay, he didn't keep walking the direction I thought he will. We'll probably lose Vala here. But maybe get murdered in. Oh, maybe even better. Two for two. Uh, tribute at the bottom, we need to go now. Can they buy enough time? That's the question. Picking Void Prison. Looks like Uther's buying time for now. They're gonna get level 10 as well. Vikings are having a low amount of splitting here, so we're not doing as bad in the experience department as we could. Nice. Let your rings know. Now what what I wanna do when Cursed Hollow goes into curse mode, I wanna make sure we have someone in every lane. There's some very cheap and easy experience to pick up with all these minions that are one HP. Giving that up by congregating in a single lane seems like such a terrible waste to me. Another reason the curse is great is of course siege damage itself. That's the main one here. This is a little bit too hot. Gonna go for a drink here. I think I may have saved my allies from death here. And we got one kill. Fort is down. We're pushing every lane. Very nice. I like it. Curse is ending in 13 seconds. I want to get one more wave here. But is it safe for me to do it? Yes. 
Let me ask my allies to pull back. We got some nice results here. We killed top forward. We got XP everywhere. We never left the lane. Okay. One bridge too far, boys. One bridge too far. <laughs> now I lost uh, my gathering power stacks, which makes it not worth it. The curse was over, and I was continuing as if the curse wasn't over yet. And the fort managed to tag me and slow me. It was a one for one, but it's bad because we have one hero level higher, which means he gets more XP, plus I lose my stacks. I think we can start to group up soon. Let's go there, boss, together. Um, I'm eager to have Uther be part of our team once because he's our healer, and without him, we're losing some potential. I see two at the top here, which means there could be four doing the boss right here. They're not. They could be at the heart camp. They're not. Malph is at the top. I think we can do their boss. There's at least two and a half people missing. Some of the Vikings, Tassadar, as well as uh, Malfurion up there. So There's a good opportunity to steal it. Okay, Faustad's at the bottom. They got no idea. Now we try to kill Faustad. A little bit uh, overly much the hammer party there was no way for him to get away but I don't mind I waited with my singularity spike because I know Falstad has a confirmed escape a lot of people they try to aim skill shots at Falstads and Valas who have vault or Tychus with run and gun barrel roll of Falstad and the problem is they're gonna use it so just wait with your skill shot until after they went into battle boat to save themselves. This means they won't have Viking longboat next team fight. I'm just gonna go here because it looks like they could be outnumbered soon. I think we should pull back. That's a pretty good disengage. I mean, I used my Void Prison, but he also used his um, Shock and All, or it's called Hinterland Blast now. So that's a, that's a fair trade. EVX. There are only three people. Need to make sure not to fight here. Oh, wow. It just came, very perceptive of him. We didn't ask for help, but he came, he saw it. So that's good. Havana did not come yet, but neither is Falstad here yet. Uh, see, I should have waited for his escape. He used it before I even spiked. It shows how important it is to wait for people to use their escape mechanism first before using skill shots. This one is a little bit scary, a little bit risky, but they still have 1.3 heroes dead. So it's good. You need to be greedy when you're ahead if you feel like it's within the realm of allowed risks. In this case it was. Gonna get this bruiser, it's gonna drain a lot of ammo here. Given enough time, it will take down that hole. I have been spotted. Careful here. Missed both my spikes. Wouldn't have done much on Muradin anyway, so I guess it's all the same. Let's see. Gonna uh, do... I need to kill that heal ward. Oops. A little bit of uh, 
heroic ability anti-synergy there as I was trying to lock them down so we could get a good Uther Hammer Party and Vala Reign of Vengeance. It happened at the same time. Unlucky. So we suffered a defeat. This one drain all the ammo of the wall here. So that's something that may come into play later. Let's see. What should we have done here? I needed to be on Falstad. I was perhaps in the wrong place. Now this is certainly one bridge too far. This is way too risky for them. I fear like they're going to pay the price here. They may get the boss, but I think we'll clean them up and kill them. But they are low. Oh, oh, he's going to use Sundering. He's going to use Sundering. And he's almost going to steal it, but not quite. Close. Very close. Nice try there. I saw someone portaling. I'm going to try and take him down. They will pay the price for it and suffer some losses. Enemy team is also cursed in the meantime. We do have a boss against us. I, I knew it, Falstad. You're still around. I knew it. You were slow. You should have flown. Too greedy, Falstad. Too greedy. I thank you. So they are cursed. Gonna wait for his escape. He did use a shield instead. I'll make sure I don't take too much damage here. I am low. They've got Muradin back. That was a little bit risky. They're doing Merc Camps during the curse. Not sure why. It's a bit of a waste. You want to make use of the curse normally to get push in but there's only 10 seconds left so i'm i'm not gonna say or do much about it and i think we're ready for another fight here enough I shall do now, this is the kind of void prison where you use it to get in position and engage very powerful They do have some good heals there with mouth. Nice eating him. Tranquility is gonna run out. Yeah, he should be dead. Uh, this was a wonderful engage. And worth more than a mid fight Void Prison for many reasons. Namely, we can get better ultis off. It would be nice if Uther could heal me a bit. Uh, they have Tassadar, they have three one-third heroes dead, and we're closing in on level 20. Once we do, I'm gonna get Rewind. Let's get one more keep. I'm gonna get Rewind, and I'm gonna be able to do four Singularity Spikes. There we go, Rewind. Use my first aid, just for safety. I think, I think we can pull back now. Wanna refill mana. Refill oplo oplo. Just refill some mana. Trap their boss. If Tassadar tries to stay out of trade range, we know they're probably going to go to boss. Ah, he did not stay out of trade range, you see? He was revealed. Let's go. That's okay. Quite damaging, this uh, lo longboat. I'm gonna go from the other side. Rather than take all the same... Oh. The Raven Lord demands tribute. Yeah, rather than go from the same side as your allies, where you can take all the same splash damage that your allies do, unnecessarily damaging you, it's usually better to go around. Enemy team dominated. Enemy team dominated twice, if I didn't hear mistakenly. Let's try to finish. 
would be nice if Uther could heal me. Okay, let's finish it off. Vala did not need to get tribute, but I don't mind things done in good intentions. That should be it. GG well played. Well played. Famon, May, Pook and Plage. Nice damage there by Thrall. So that was my hit and run zero two build. The one that is designed not to stay in the thick of combat, but to come from the side. Or come from behind and mainly revolve around really high single target damage as well as good splash damage and getting away again don't take too much hits to the face either from spells or basic attacks and make yourself scarce be a constant threat harass between different lanes and finally have good initiations or separations of the enemy team with void prison i hope you like this zero tool guide as much as i did in uh, creating it um i will be uploading more one-stop guides for other heroes on this channel if you'd like to see more of heroes of the storm hero guides please consider subscribing to this channel also i do a live stream pretty much every day on twitch.tv slash follow grubby thanks very much for watching good luck with your zero tool play on ladder he's one of the most fun unique and diverse heroes very powerful as well enjoy and see you guys in the nexus bye